بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد the right of the believers over one another are many in accordance with Islam in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and some of the rights as mentioned by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are as follows that it's, as it is contained in a very important hadith of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, the hadith of Abi Huraira. On Abi Huraira ta radiyallahu ta'ala an, and the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alayhi Wasalam aqal, حق المسلمي على مسلمي خمس رد السلام وعيادة المريض واتباع الجنائز وإجابة الدعوة وتشميت العتش متفق عليه in this hadith which is agreed upon in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the right of the believer over the believer is five and in another narration he said six alayhi salatu wasalam letting us know that it's not restricted to these numbers but these are some of the most important rights that the believer has the believers have over one another and he alayhi salatu wasalam said Haqqa Muslim ala Muslim khams So there are five rights the believer has over the believer Returning the salam Visiting the sick Following the funeral procession Responding to an invitation And saying Yarhamakallah or may Allah have mercy upon you when the believer sneezes and says, Alhamdulillah, all praise belong to Allah. And this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith, there are many, many benefits. And we will briefly go over some of them. Some of the benefits we gain from this hadith is that of course the rights of the believers over one another is not restricted to five as we mentioned as is mentioned in another narration that there are six letting us know that it is la yufid al hasr that it is not restricted you know it's not restricted to a particular number but these are some of the main rights and you'll find this a lot in the sharia in the quran and in the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where sometimes a specific number and this is uh, prevalent in the Arabic language, refers to actually many. So maybe a particular number is mentioned, but in it, it references uh, a lot. And this is also, we find this in the English language as well, and I'd imagine many other languages that use this, that it's not always meant. Sometimes the specific number that is mentioned or it is not a literal meaning, but in fact it could be an idiom, or it could be uh, an analogy, and so forth. So those are that's one of the benefits we gain from this hadith. Another benefit we gain from this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that.
the first rite that's mentioned is Rad the Salam, showing us the importance of returning the greeting. And may Allah forgive us of our shortcomings, because I know that sometimes when I'm reading the Quran in the Masjid, I don't always return the greeting. And Allah knows best what is best. Is it better to stop reading the Quran and respond? But what I notice in some of the places, especially if you're around the Bedouins, like in some of the Arab countries, a man will enter the masjid and almost yell out, Salaamu Alaikum to the whole masjid. And then another one will come and another one will come. So much so to where you feel your Quran is being interrupted. So sometimes I find a, I may not respond appropriately and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best in that situation. But we do know that it's one of the rights of the believers. Is that the believer, when he greets that he should be responded to. That's his haq. That's a right that, as, as they would say, a God-given right. This is the right that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the believers. And this is from the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hey. Another benefit we gain from this hadith The second right that's mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is visiting the sick. Is that the believer should visit his Muslim brother or sister or even non-Muslims when they're sick. Encouraging them. Assisting them, but visiting them and encouraging them, especially if it, they're on their deathbed. And we're not always aware of that, of course when it's that time. So we should be there to assist one another and encourage one another to remember Allah much in that state of sickness and of course in health. Another benefit of this hadith, or as it was mentioned, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned ittiba janaiz that following the funeral procession, that when you're Muslim brother or sister dies that you should you should strive to pray over them that's their right and follow the funeral procession if you're able to do so because that's a right that the believer has over the believer as is mentioned in this hadith and remember them with khair and remember them with goodness and forgive, seek forgiveness for them pray over them and ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them and blesses us with Jannah and makes it easy upon their families for the loss that they've sustained another important aspect of this hadith is related to the statement of the Prophet sallallahu when he said what ijabat dawa that the believer should respond or go to the invitation when their Muslim brother or sister invites them to a gathering like an akith or a walima, a gathering where the person basically a either a wedding ceremony, wedding party you could say, or the akika which is the, for a newborn, a baby shower, so to speak. That the Muslims should respond to those invitations or any type of food gathering, as long as it is something that's at least mubah, that is permissible, not muharram. So you're not obligated to go to a party if it's going to be mixing between the sexes. And you're not obligated to go to a party if there is alcohol and drugs and you're not obligated to go if it's going to be full of music and ghiba and namima, you know, backbiting and slander. And a gathering of where the people are just cursing, making takfir of others, and involving in things which are impermissible in Islam. Those kind of things you're, do not fall under this hadith. Those are not the kind of gatherings you are obligated to attend. But the Prophet ﷺ is referring to those things which are permissible by the shara alayhi salatu wassalam 
another benefit of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa or another aspect, the final aspect, is Tashmeet al atis Tashmeet al atis That responding to the believer when he sneezes, he or she sneezes. That, for example, when a believer sneezes, they say, Alhamdulillah, all praises belongs to Allah. That's what we do in Islam. And the one who hears this, then the, if they hear this from their brother or sister in Islam, then they should respond by saying, Yarhamakallah, may Allah have mercy upon you. Then they have fulfilled their rights with regards to this important thing because the Prophet ﷺ listed these things as rights. Haqqul Muslim ala Muslim comes. He listed these. He alayhi salatu wasalam said that these are rights. So that shows us the importance that they're not, it's not just, well, you know, it's a habit. Oh, it's a custom. No. This is your brother and sister's right over you. So you should give them their right. Bi'idnillah. So, then the person who sneezed after they said Alhamdulillah and the person responded by saying Ya may Allah have mercy upon you then they respond by saying Yahdikum Allah wa yuslih ba'lakum May Allah guide you and rectify your affairs or your condition that shows you the beauty of the haq of Islam that it's cons- that the Muslim is always concerned about the well-being of their brothers and sisters and striving to honor their rights and praying for them because the bond in fact between the believers is a spiritual bond it's a bond where the believers pray for one another they pray together they share all of these things they create the social bonds but they're based upon a spiritual brotherhood a brotherhood where the people are tied together by their belief in the oneness of Allah the Tawheed of Allah and their worship of Allah so acting upon that aspect of Tawheed as it's referred to the ulama, the three categories Tawheed al rububiyyah Tawheed al uluhiyah Tawheed al asmai wa sifat Tawheed al rububiyyah meaning the lordship of Allah that Allah is one he's, he's, the only, he's the creator of the heavens and earth it refers to his lordship his supremeness his magnificence he is the greatest Allahu Akbar and that he is the planner and the provider and sustainer and that bond is also cemented further is that we act upon that and that's the aspect the second category category of Tawheed Tawheed Al-Uluhiyya is that we worship Allah alone that not only do we recognize His oneness and that He's the creator of the heavens and earth but then we implement that by coming together making Hajj together praying together fasting together all of those acts of Ibadah and fulfilling the rights of one another in accordance with the Sharia that becomes an act of Ibadah if your intention is to please Allah and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and it's in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. And then the final aspect is Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat and that the believers are also united and that these rights are related to the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His divine names and attributes that are unique to Him. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above His throne. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is away from his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala, but yet he is Samiun Basir, that he is all hearing and all seeing. And that these are attributes only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses, these complete and perfect attributes, and nothing is like unto him. There is nothing that resembles him or like him, and and he's the all hearing and all seeing. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, and bless us by all of his divine names and attributes we call upon him subhana and we ask that he blesses us to make it to Ramadan 
to benefit from Ramadan and be of his obedient slaves that he loves and grants us forgiveness and mercy and increases our rizq, increases the the khair in the ummah and blesses the Muslims everywhere where they're suffering and striving and struggling in Egypt and Somalia and Ethiopia where they're being oppressed and Syria wherever the Muslims are being harmed may Allah rectify their condition and bless them to come back to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala Alaihi Wasallam